you might be thinking, hey, it's December, you're making a whole bunch of like holiday videos. Is the Hawaiian shirt really appropriate attire? Two points. One, it's November. You may be seeing this in December. I did not record it then. Two, I live in Texas, so uh, it is perfectly normal for it to be 70, 80 degrees even sometimes on Christmas. So yeah, the Hawaiian shirt is definitely appropriate attire. So, uh, today's video uh, originally was going to be about uh, a cool little uh, program out there that you may have heard of before uh, called GNU Sto. Uh, and this is a cool app for managing dot files. Basically the idea of what the app does is it sort of takes your dot files directories and creates a whole bunch of sim links to uh, put them into your home directory. Basically the way that it works is if I go into my dot files directory basically the way this works is in this directory i have a dot config file that i want to pull down a scripts file that i want to pull down and a few other various files that i want to put into my home directory a git config a zish config and xbind keys config and so what i end up doing is whenever i am setting up a new system i sort of just come through and i do ln s and i link from docs dot dot config put it in my home directory and then i do the same thing with like my scripts folder and I do the same thing with my zshenv and I do the same thing with my git config and my xbind keys and it's not a very hard thing to do but sto does actually aim to solve that and assuming that you have your dot files configured in exactly the way that they want you to it works really well and it's pretty easy to run um, the issue is if you don't have your dot file set up the way they want you to which is basically to in your home directory have a folder just called dot dot files and then what you want to do is inside of there you want to like make a directory called alacrity and then inside of there you want to make another directory called dot config and then you can actually drop in the alacrity config it's it, it wants a very specific folder structure and even if you don't use their uh, very specific folder structure you can like cd into your dot files and then run sto on each of your dot files and put them where you want them to put them uh, there's even like flags that you can use to set the uh, directory you want to pull from and then the uh, the target directory but by that time it's just as slow as creating sim links on your own. But I do like the idea of just sort of running one command and having it link up all of my dot files. And the cool thing is, you know, before I can link any dot files, I do have to pull them down, you know, via get clone or whatever. So it does mean that I will have access to any script that I put in my dot files. I would just have to, you know, navigate to that script and run it. So I thought rather than reorganize all my dot files, change the way that I have them set up, what I can do is just create a little script to basically do the exact same thing that this program does, just with the way that I have my dot file set up. So let's get started. First thing to do is I do have a folder just called scripts that keep it in my home directory, or actually it's symlinked to my home directory. Technically the directory is in my dot files in right here. I'm gonna cd into the scripts folder and I'm gonna create a new script called sto. Uh, and then on this script, just to make it executable, we can go ahead and run ch mod plus x on sto. Now we're gonna go ahead and hop into this script with whatever uh, text editor you like. I like vim and we need to create a shebang. Um, so basically what a shebang is, is it's linking to the bash program or the shell program, or in some cases like the Python program, whatever program you want to use to run the script, that's what it's linking to. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of different ways you can write this. You know, you could do, um, you know, slash bin slash bash on a lot of systems that would work. I don't actually know all the different ways to write it because basically what I've always done is this right here, hash exclamation point slash USR slash bins env bash. Uh, the reason for this, it's supposed to be portable. Um, it's supposed to run on Mac OS, most Linux distributions, BSD, all that kind of stuff. And in my experience, that's always been true. So that's what we're gonna do. So basically the way that this works is I'm just going to do the ln-s command a whole bunch of times. And uh, I'm gonna do SF, which is just gonna sort of force. And then the other thing we wanna do is we wanna pay attention pretty carefully to the actual links, the way that we set them up. We kinda wanna use the full path to the right locations because it's not the, where we run this actual script from isn't going to be where the script actually lives so we're going to sort of be wanting to spell out the entire path to the links every time we do this so the first thing we're going to do uh, let me just actually really quickly here open up my file manager and i'll go into my dot files just so i can see everything that i want to link 
So basically it's going to be this dot config folder, this dot scripts folder, a git config file, a tmux config, which I don't actually normally even link up, but I guess I can go ahead and throw it in there if I'm doing it in the script anyways, xbind keys rc, and a zshenv. So here's how this is going to work. We're going to ln-sf. We'll go from docs uh, slash dot slash dot config, and we're going to want to put it in home slash dot config and clear everything out. And then if we go ahead and run dot slash dot uh, docs dot dot scripts sto and open up a file manager. Uh, yeah, we're symlinked over. Okay, cool. So that'll work. Co so then we just sort of need to uh, make a whole bunch of copies of that one command. So if we come back over here, let's go back into the sto script. And we're basically just gonna wanna gonna make a copy of this for every file that we need to copy over. So we'll go ahead and do the scripts and the script. And then we need, uh, what else do we need? We need the git config. And we're gonna wanna put that into the git config. And we're gonna want the x bind keys rc. And we'll put that with the x bind keys rc. Then we'll need the zish env and the zish env. That'd probably be good. I, I technically forgot about the tmux config, but no, I don't even remember the last time I used tmux. That's probably fine. So let's give it a shot now. We'll go ahead and close that. And what we could do is just sort of open up a file manager and remove all of these dot files and sort of pretend as if, hey, this is a brand new system. I've never done anything on it before. All I did was literally just pull down my dot files and that's it. So assuming that's the case, what I should be able to do is run one command dot slash docs dot dot scripts sto and then when i run the file manager again got my config folder linked up got my scripts folder linked up got my git config linked up xbind keys rc the zshenv and no tmux oh i forgot i didn't put the tmux config in there cool so we're good the one thing that might be interesting is um i might just want to quit renaming my documents folder on arch linux to docs instead of documents uh because that is almost always where i store my dot files that could end up being an issue if i'm using something like ubuntu or something that pre-makes all of the user directories uh but yeah I think that'll work. I, I know this is a little bit stupider than just using Sto <laughs> the way that everybody else does. Definitely a good app. It's just sort of a, a bit picky about how you have your dot files organized and I really don't want to reorganize mine. So if you find yourself in a similar situation, it's very easy to make a script that does the exact same thing. Uh, I don't know if anyone else is that level of work hard to be lazy the way that I am, but if you are, I got you. But that is going to be it for this video, everybody. Thank you for watching. Uh, and uh, be sure to check back here tomorrow for another uh, video if you want. And uh, if you do, I'll see you then.